could actually get away with much more. But again, uh, do they get in a, a crazy shape? Absolutely, phenomenal shape. Could they be a little bit bigger? Uh, I'm sure they could, if they were just liberal enough to increase uh, a bit. Because the problem is when people are dieting for a show, it's like they come to a point where every week they think they have to reduce the calories to the point where they're reducing and they're shutting down the metabolism. Yes, that's what uh, I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Because the, there comes to a point, like you said, yeah. once you've got no body fat, yeah. so what are you supposed to do then? Yeah. Are you going to still reduce the calories? No, you're no, not. No, you're going to increase the calories. You have to increase the calories. Yeah. Absolutely. Because a diet that got you lean is not going to keep you muscular if you break the point of uh, when you have no fat. Then the diet is deficient in calories, right? You burn all the body fat. What is now left over, you're going to burn muscle now. Is that the reason why some people, when they're dieting for shows, all of a sudden they hit a brick wall where they're not losing no body fat and the weight is not dropping? Yeah, because their the metabolism is now shut because really um, they're probably three, five, eight hundred calories deficient, right? Yeah. But because of maybe pharmaceuticals they're using, they can maybe maintain. So, how would you rectify something like that? Well, I would reintroduce exactly this. I would, uh, I, I would, you know, increase the, the caloric intake in a pre during post. I would put them on, on more carbs. Oh, at, that period. At that period. Yeah. But you know, this is you, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, it's just okay. You might even squeeze through the contest, but then you're gonna blow up afterwards. This yeah. this happens that's every time. That's the rebound effect. Yeah, right? rebound effect. Yeah, because metabolism is so, so shut. You start eating. Uh, high calories, you're going to yeah. just... People uh, don't realize yeah. how sensitive the body is to the calories after the context. Yes. Yeah. So, this is uh, uh, pretty much if you, anybody would ever talk to me and how I do the diets, this is how I do it. I would have you have a fat burning phase, maintenance phase, and anabolic phase, right? So, uh, if you don't need to lose body fat, as he just mentioned, <laughs> I would not have you do the cardio on empty stomach and have a fat burning phase what is going to be burnt if you don't have any. You know, so uh, at the stage that you're, even okay, when you're dieting for the contest and you were doing cardio, 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 now you burn body fat and there's four more weeks for the show and you continue to do cardio. Yeah, because true. it's expected that you're supposed to do the cardio. No, you don't need to. Yeah, because the funny thing about it was I was only doing 20 minutes of cardio for my last uh, prep yeah. and my metabolism was running so fast, but I got to the point where I thought, I ain't got nothing to lose, so I need to maintain, so I just keep on doing the same thing what I'm doing. But because my metabolism is running faster and faster, everything's speeding up, so the same amount of calories that I'm having is not maintaining my muscle size no more. So that's why you come in flatter and flatter. Yes, that's when you have to really uh, stop and think. Um, uh, that's my, one of my favorite sayings from uh, Socrates. I cannot teach you anything, I can only make you think. You know, so think everything that you do, uh, think of uh, why I'm doing it. Does it make sense or does it doesn't make sense? So when you do those super low calorie diets, why? What's going to happen if you do it, right? And a lot of people, uh, very intelligent, educated people, uh, somehow ignorant and they, they don't want to think about it. I know I'm doing it wrong. How can you do it if you know it's wrong, right? Yeah, How, I don't believe as well as I mean, people need to make a body weight. Mm -hmm. So what happens straight away? The coach puts them on zero calories, you know, carbs. Yeah. Yeah. So, Okay, when, when they make the, need to make the, the, body, the weight for the uh, yeah, yeah. category that's a little bit different, of course, it's a little bit riskier. I would, of course, do the dehydration rather than uh, yeah. starvation. But uh, it's, it's, it's nevertheless, it's not a happy scenario. Yeah, because you're just taking out glucose from your muscles and yeah. water, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do, you have, do you guys have any questions about this? I just got a question about carbohydrates. Yes. or measurements? Okay, yeah. um, uh, this is how I read it. Uh, a long time ago, uh, in the 80s, I read something like some stupid guy <laughs> said that 200 grams of glucose uh, immediately get post workout. And I was like, who is this fool? Right? 200 grams, right? And that was actually Charles Polyton, who became, who became a very close friend of mine. And uh, you know, then I, I find out the reason why he was suggesting this and made perfect sense. 
This is how much glucose, really, you would uh, burn in a, in a heavy-duty, intense training. I, to that point, I didn't really have seen any studies to know how much is really burnt, but up to 200 grams. So he was back in the day suggesting this 200 grams post-workout. Uh, I don't suggest post-workout. I suggest pre and during and then a little bit post because again, why break down the tissue and then replenish it? Why not deliver when you uh, train? So to answer your question, how much you should take? You should probably take uh, at first 100 grams uh, total before and during. Yeah. I'm sorry? Kind of what, how, how everyone's different when it comes to how they tolerate carbohydrates. So, what would that be going off? Would it be a measurement or? Oh, no, for intensity of the training. No, I, I would take your guys and the girls. Even though girls train as hard as guys, of course, you don't have a, so much power output. You don't lift such a heavy weight. For girls, I would usually recommend starting from 30, 50, maximum 75 grams of carbs during your training. For guys like uh, you train today, I see you have your training. You're easily burning, you know, 7,500. You know, easily and probably much more, but uh, I would not uh, risk and push you more in the beginning. I would, you know, start you modestly. So you take, let's say, 20 before, 50 during, and then you see how that goes, and then increase to 25 and, you know, 70 and so on. I had a pro bodybuilders usually take uh, 100, 125 grams during your training, you know. Yeah. So, um, somebody. One The calculation that you would use for, you wouldn't use it for an average male, obviously, so me and Zach yeah, it's complete. Yeah, so. it's It's not exactly the same. Of course, there's not really percentage by body weight and stuff like that because, you know, sometimes, you know, smaller guy can have actually higher energy uh, uh, output. It's intensity. Yeah, it's the intensity of the training, really. So uh, this is why I mentioned that uh, about 200 grams that I learned from Charles Polican because he's really the one that, you know, start putting this and I say, wow. Uh, I thought he was completely wrong, right? But then I've seen that, yeah, this is about uh, what you're going to need to replenish everything you have lost. So imagine if, this, I don't even put 200, I give you a little bit less. But I still have you post-workout shake and post-workout meal, right? But during a training, okay, this kind of uh, training that we did today for girls would easily burn 75 grams of carbs and for guys easily 100. And now, would you be uh, uh, courageous enough to take 75 right away? You probably wouldn't because it's only got only got, right? But uh, start with, uh, okay, 25 girls and then increase to 30 and stuff like that. What you're going to be surprised is, uh, Zach was saying, sometimes when your metabolism is shut because you're in a catabolic state, this is going to get you out of catabolism, right? It actually can, you know, uh, trigger, uh, you know, your, your metabolism. So, uh, by increasing the carbs, now all of a sudden you, you start burning fat, and that doesn't make sense to anybody, so they don't want to do it. But this is exactly if you are in a shutdown state metabolically, you, you bring in the carbs when are safe, which is during your training is the safest, and immediately after, you can actually boost your metabolism back up. Now, uh, as uh, you talk about if um, somebody has a shutdown metabolism, I would, uh, yesterday I talked about it in the other seminar, you do the interval training rather than um, yeah. Um, cardio. Yeah, because intervals boost the metabolism for much longer. Even there is that, uh, it's called uh, respiratory exchange ratio. That's uh, 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 the number that tells you if you're using a glucose or fat. So if you use, a, a, you know, glucose is, you know, one and fat is like 0 0.7. And then if you're, Anywhere in between, you're using a little bit of both. So the cardio is using only fat, but uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, intervals are using a little bit of both. So you burn more fat with the cardio, yes, correct. But you, you increase more metabolism after the activity with the intervals. And uh, when you're uh, close to the contest, things are not happening. You know, don't wait, you have to react. So you have to change something you know, nutritionally and something from training and some from cardio. You would do the nutrition side first, isn't it? And then yes. you, would, you would do the interval after. Yes. But I always uh, really ask myself, 
maximized. What is maximized? And I'm going to tell you another story, okay? I was talking to